In this lesson, we're going to simplify trigonometric expressions using the fundamental trigonometric identities. And then later on, we're going to use these skills to verify trigonometric identities. And also, we will use these skills to solve trigonometric equations. And so for the first seven examples, including the practice problems that go along with them, our final answer should be written without any fractions and should be one term. So we're going to start off example one. The first strategy, and there are a few different strategies that we can use to simplify trigonometric expressions, but one of them is just to change everything in terms of sines and cosines. And so we've got the tangent x times the cotangent of x. We can write tan x as sine x over cosine x, and we can write cotan x as cosine x over sine x. And you can see here that the sine x's will cancel and the cosine x's will cancel, really replacing all of those with 1. So our answer is 1. And although the instructions didn't say to use this method, there is another method you can use if you weren't instructed to to use sines and cosines is that we could look at another one of the fundamental identities and that would be the reciprocal identities because we know that tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other. We could have started with tan x and the cotan is 1 over the tan x and so anything times its reciprocal is equal to 1. The tans would cancel out and you get 1. And so in the end, there's going to be more than one way to get to your final answer. And if given a choice, you can use any method you want. If specifically told to do it a certain way, you should follow those instructions. So example two, we've got cosecant x over cotan x. And so we will use the instructions here. We'll change to sines and cosines. So cosecant is 1 over the sine. We're going to divide that by cotan which is the cosine over the sine. You take the numerator and you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. We can cancel the signs, really replacing them with 1. In the end, we get 1 over cosine x, but the restrictions on how you were asked to leave your answer was that it either had to be, it has to be one term, which we have, but there should be no fraction in your answer. So 1 over cosine can be written as secant x. At this point, you should pause the video and try practice problem 1 and 2 using the same methods that I've used here, trying to turn it into sines and cosines, and then start the video up again to check your work. For practice problem one, we have cotan x times sine x. Cotan is cosine x over sine x. And we're going to multiply that by sine x. If it helps you to put the sine x over one so that you can see it better, that's fine. You don't have to. We'll cancel the sines. And so our final answer is just cosine x. Practice problem two secant is 1 over the cosine divided by sine x over cosine x multiply by the reciprocal so 1 over the cosine of x times cosine x over sine x cosine x is cancel we get 1 over sine x but again to follow the instructions we want to leave our answer so that it does not have a fraction in it so this would be, the final answer would be cosecant x, which is 1 over the sine. The next strategy is to use substitution of a known identity. And we'll start with the three Pythagorean identities as a, as a refresher. So the first Pythagorean identity we looked at was sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. We then derived the other two Pythagorean identities by just dividing through by sine squared and then also dividing through by cosine squared. So when we divided through by sine squared 
we got 1 plus cotan squared x is equal to cosecant squared x. And then the, the third, if we divide through by cosine squared, we got tan squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. And so these are identities. We can also manipulate them to make some substitutions. So when I look at example 3, I have 1 minus secant squared. So when I see a trig function squared and a 1, I'm hoping that it's going to be literally just a new, um, just a manipulation of one of the Pythagorean identities. And I can see, I'm going to look at the Pythagorean identity that has a secant squared in it. So if I subtract secant squared x from each side, I also want to subtract tan squared x from each side. So what happens is, on the left hand side, the tan squareds will cancel, leaving me with 1 minus secant squared x. And then on the right hand side, the secant squareds cancel, leaving me with negative tan squared x. And so by manipulating a known Pythagorean identity, we've come up with a new identity, and we know that 1 minus secant squared x is equal to negative tan squared x. And so I will replace the 1 minus the secant squared x up here with negative tan squared x. So take a minute to manipulate, obviously this has the cosecant in it, so take a, take a minute to manipulate this, pause the video, and try to make a substitution on practice problem 3. So if I start with 1 plus cotan squared x equals cosecant squared, and I subtract cotan squared x from each side, and I also subtract cosecant squared x from each side. On the left hand side the cotans cancel. On the right hand side the cosecants cancel. And I'm left with 1 minus cosecant squared x is equal to negative cotan squared x. And so I can replace in practice problem 3 the 1 minus cosecant squared I can replace that with negative cotan squared x, and so I have simplified that. There's one term and there's no fraction. So the next strategy involves combining two terms into one, and so we'll start with example four. I have two fractions, so let me rewrite this so that we'll have a little room to do this. So I'm going to have tan x over one minus secant squared x over tan x. So I'm going to need a denominator of tan x, so I'd multiply by the missing tan x over tan x. So I end up with tan squared x minus secant squared x all over tan x. And I see I've got tan squared and secant squared, and so I'm looking for one of Pythagorean identities. I'd want the Pythagorean identity that has tan squared and secant squared in it. So if I if I subtract 1 from each side and I subtract secant squared x from each side, the 1's are gone on the left side, so I'd have tan squared x minus secant squared x. And on the left hand side, excuse me, on the right hand side, I'd have equals negative 1. So tan squared x minus secant squared x is equal to negative 1. The final step is to rewrite, so I'd have negative 1 over tan x which would equal negative cotan the reciprocal of tan is cotan, and I need the negative 1. All right, let's try example 5. I want to combine. Again, I might rewrite these uh, so we'll have a little bit more room to work with. I'm going to multiply by the missing factor to create 
a common denominator, so this is missing 1 plus cosine x. I need a 1 minus cosine x, so on this side multiplying both numerator and denominator by the missing factor. So in the numerator I get 1 plus cosine x plus 1 minus cosine x all over 1 plus cosine x times 1 minus cosine x. At this point I want to simplify the numerator but I don't want to multiply out the denominator. I want to leave it factored until the very end. Sometimes you'll be able to cancel a common factor so you don't want to multiply it out. If you can't cancel a common factor sometimes it helps to multiply it out to see if you can make a Pythagorean substitution. So we'll start by canceling out the cosine x's. So I end up getting 2 over 1 plus cosine x times 1 minus cosine x. And I can see now there's no factor in the numerator that will cancel with those so I am going to multiply them out and when I multiply 1 plus cosine x times 1 minus cosine x I get 1 minus cosine squared x and it's the same as a plus b times a minus b gives us a squared minus b squared so now I can the final answer is not supposed to be written as a fraction in the instructions and it should only be one term so I can actually rewrite 1 minus cosine squared x using a Pythagorean identity. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. If I subtract cosine x from each side, I get sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. So I can make a substitution here. 2 over the sine squared x and to follow the instructions I shouldn't leave my answer in fractional form so this would be 2 times cosecant squared x. Just to recap we started off we wanted to combine two fractions together I needed to get a common denominator which is 1 plus cosine x 1 minus cosine x. I multiply each side by the missing factor simplify the numerator but leave the denominator factored until you can see that there's no factor to cancel and at that time multiply them out to see if there's a Pythagorean substitution you can make and in this case there was because sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. The practice problems will be on the next video.